anti-brids, my favorite of the Poi hybrids, and today I'm doing the list that you all knew was coming. I'm counting down my top five. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, bringing you Poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain, and today I am being ridiculously self-indulgent and giving you my top five of a category of tricks that almost nobody else plays with. Hey, if you got a problem with that, Go get your own channel. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these companies and the work that they do to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links down in the description of this video. Okay, so anti-brids. Even by the already ludicrously Byzantine standards of poi jargon, this term is a pretty deep cut. So let's start with the parent term, hybrids. Hybrids are a specialized subset of poi tricks that involve mashing up two different poi tricks to make something new. And that's a really oversimplified definition. If you'd like a more complete one that I literally spent a month writing and rewriting, you should check out my Poi Explainer video on hybrids because it goes really deep down this rabbit hole. But back to anti-brids. There's a subset of these Poi hybrids that involve mashing up two Poi tricks wherein the path of one Poi winds up being the exact same size and shape as the hand path for the other trick. The result? It looks like there's a connection between one Poi and the opposite hand. And I love this effect. There's something about that kind of connection and really nailing it to the point where it almost seems like one is driving the other that just feels really satisfying to me, as well as looking super cool. Plus which, they have really cool mathematical properties, but that's a story for another time. So why anti-brids? Okay, so this is a story that's a bit more complicated. Originally there were a few other competing terms that more or less described the same thing, the most popular of which was head orbiting moves. Which, let's face it, is really accurate and easy to understand, but also an unholy mouthful to have to say out loud or type. And then there was this other term that I'm pretty sure originally referred to hybrids wherein one poi was meant to be going anti-spin relative to the other. Hence, anti-brid. And because that first trick it described was also a head orbiting move, the two wound up mutating into synonyms. And of course, early on in the history of my channel, I was practicing these tricks pretty heavily and a viewer informed me that I should be calling them anti-brids rather than hybrids. So I did for years, and the name kind of stuck. So would you conclude from this whole story that a name as bizarre as Antibrid came about as a result of a long and very silly game of tech poi telephone? I mean, yeah, that, that actually seems pretty accurate. So let me count down my top five favorites in this move category, because no matter how weird or niche they are, I freaking love them. One quick note before we do, and that's to remember that each of these follows the naming convention of hybrids, that is trick one versus trick two. None of them has a unique name. And with that said, let's dive in. Number five, pendulum versus cap. So straight up, in my mind, this is the foundational anti-brid and absolutely essential for anyone that wants to get into this corner of the poi world. It incorporates sections of both polyrhythm as well as the balance of static spin versus pendulum. It includes transition points throughout the length of the trick and gravity is always helping you out. I think I first learned this one from watching Ronin videos, but it wasn't until I took a class from him at Fire Drums that I ultimately realized the versatility of this trick, and believe me, I have used it for everything. Transitions into other anti-brids, using point isolations across the top, mixing it up with pendulum versus one pedal inspin. Goodness, there are so many directions to take just this one trick. I don't think it's a stretch to call this one of, if not the most versatile trick in the anti-brid world. So if anti-brids are a thing that you want to explore, I'd highly recommend you start here. Number four, static spin versus triquetra. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. This may have actually been one of, if not the first anti-brid I ever learned and still one of my favorites. Basically, it has all the visual interest of the Mercedes, but I feel like it ratchets up the complexity and wow factor. This is still one of my favorite tricks to perform for a live audience. It's easy to perform it fast enough so that on fire or with LEDs, people can see the full pattern due to the persistence of vision effect. And it's also one of those poi tricks that practically begs to be performed as fast as you can possibly do it. Pro tip, get that static spin hand as close to your shoulder as you possibly can get it. This will make the connection between your hand and poi much more clean and overall just make the trick more pleasing to watch. I think the thing I most love about this trick is the dynamic 
range of it. A Mercedes fills up roughly the same sized area between both the extension and the triquetra, whereas the static spin versus triquetra basically fills up two different sized areas, more fully utilizing the visual canvas, so to speak. Bottom line, this one is an absolute home run. Make sure to add it to your toolbox. Number three, pendulum versus triquetra. It's rare that I can point to the exact moment when I first saw and knew a trick was going to be a big deal, but this is actually one of those cases. Pendulum versus Triquetra with hands together had been around forever, but it wasn't until Ivan Mel Gorbanov's first tech poi video, Me and My Shadow, that I saw anyone performing this trick in an anti-bird arrangement. Oh my goodness, not only was it clear right away that this was a trick that I was going to have to learn, but also that it was going to be something that every serious tech head of the era was going to have to dive into as well. Basically, it had has many of the same transition points as the static spin versus triquetra, but can be done slower and creates more pleasing lines in the process. That split time same direction section across the top in particular has been a transition point that I've used many times over the years. This trick also holds the distinction of being the most difficult trick I've ever simulated in After Effects. As it turns out, there's a lot of subtlety to that triquetra, which would probably more accurately be called a cap than first appears, and it actually took me years to figure out a way to accurately model it. This despite my own two eyes telling me that it existed and worked. So, Mel. You've given us a lot in the tech poi world, but I think this may be my favorite contribution you've given us. My hat's off to you. Number two, isolation versus gunslinger. Yeah, so fair warning, the back half of this list is all going to be stupid difficult stuff. This is one of those tricks that kind of became a personal mission to me at one point, and something that I kind of pursued against all reason for a time. The background here is that I saw John Alvarez doing a similar trick in a video long ago, but I was a little disappointed with it. While I could see what he was going for, in my mind it failed the most important test of an anti-brid. There was no clear relationship between the poi head and the hand. So I resolved that I was going to do something about it. I was going to find the perfect version of this trick no matter the cost. As it turned out, the key was that it doesn't work with a static spin like John was trying to do. But if your root hand is instead doing an isolation, the pieces can be made to fit together, and by gum does the end result look freaking gorgeous. To this day, this is one of my favorite tricks to bust out, because when the pieces line up, people absolutely lose their minds over it. And I just like being able to point to it and be like, no, that's how it should look. I may have an anti-bird problem. Number one, isolation versus horizontal cat eye. Oh come on, you had to know this one was coming. At one point, I could count on my fingers how many people around the world could do this trick. Horizontal cat eyes were difficult enough, but integrating them into an anti-brid like this was and continues to be more than just bragging rights. This trick is elite. This trick is freaking magic if you can make all the pieces line up, but it's also insanely difficult. That horizontal cat eye can really easily fall into a linear extension, let alone trying to get it to mesh up with an isolation. Getting a clean version of this was one of my first real points of accomplishment in the tech poi world, and still one of my most proud ones. And you know what? It's still incredibly rare. I can't remember the last time I saw someone else pull it out. So that's the challenge to all of you out there watching. Show me more isolation versus horizontal cat eye hybrids, because they're beautiful, and they're freaking awesome. Let the challenge begin. So goodness, if you're still here, that probably means that you're the other person in the poi world that really cares a lot about hybrids. Hi, we should be friends. What are your favorite tricks that fall under this category? Let me know down in the comments. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to help other people find these videos. And of course, let me know in the comments what types of tricks you'd like to see me do top five videos for. And finally, this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these wonderful people right here. They make this video and all the videos on my channel possible by supporting this work over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the work that I do and spread the love of poi spinning far and wide, please sign up over at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. You can get early access to all of my content, extras that don't make it into the regular videos, and vote on topics that I tackle in the future. Give that a look, please and thank you.